Hey, welcome back to Nick Geo. For my last video, we took a deep dive into Colombia because I had been there so recently and that got me thinking. I was just in Bulgaria too. I spent a week there last summer and it made me want to talk about that one in a more general sense as well. So with that, we are going to jump right into 50 things you might not know about Bulgaria. Roses are a very important cultural aspect of Bulgaria. The country produces 70% of the world's rose oil, much of which is from Rose Valley, a region found under the Balkan mountain range, spanning more than 130 kilometers. Rose festivals are actually held at the beginning of every June to celebrate the harvest. This includes music, dance, a parade, and oftentimes arts made from locals. The Belogradchik rocks are cliffs found in Bulgaria right by the town of the same name. They're strange shapes made out of sandstone and conglomerate rock found on the western slopes of the Balkan mountain range. Reaching up to 200 meters in height, various colors of red and yellow give it an even more unique look. Many of them are named after people and objects heavily based on legends from the country. On this topic, Bulgaria is known for its massive number of caves. It has more than 4,500 in total. My favorite one that I actually got to check out was the Prohodna Cave or the God's Eyes Cave. This is found right by the town of Iskar. Located in the middle chamber, certain points of the day can illuminate the inside through two holes that give the appearance of eyes. Depending on weather, time of day, the moon cycle, you can actually get a pretty great view of the night sky, all because of this naturally eroded occurrence. To give an idea of the size of this, there's me. Along the trails of these caves, if you're feeling really ambitious, you can go through all sorts of hikes, through the mountains and up and down valleys. Eventually, you'd be led to the St. Marina Monastery. Built during the Second Bulgarian Kingdom around 1185 AD, it's a tiny one-room work of art on the mountain. Reaching it also provides an incredible view. Speaking of incredible views, just a few kilometers away, you can find the Cavern Rescue. This basically gives you a look through the entire landscape, and you can actually see the entrance of the caves from here. Not only that, but you also get to check out this really cool stone building and climb to the top of it to see this even better. If you haven't figured this out, the Balkan mountain range offers all sorts of great hikes and trails. Now, let us take some time to talk about the people. Bulgaria takes its origin from the people group known as the Bulgars, who actually started out in the Central Asian region, likely around modern-day Kazakhstan. They're a semi-nomadic Turkic group that migrated to what is now modern-day Ukraine. That dates all the way back to the 4th century, and over time, they would mix in with bigger empires, such as the Ottomans and the Mongols. After mixing with the Slavic peoples of Ukraine, they would move southward and establish what is now the modern Bulgarian state. Speaking of which, the Cyrillic alphabet actually owes itself to Bulgaria, not Russia. Saint Cyril in Methodias created this alphabet in the medieval times, both being descendants of the Bulgars. Allegedly, this idea came because they wanted to make the holy book legible to the Slavic peoples, as they didn't really have a language that you could use with the Greek alphabet or the Latin alphabet. The Tsarishina Hole, located in a small town of the same name, is said to be one of the most haunted points of the entire country. A digging project commenced in 1990. This was meant to look for a hidden treasure of Tsar Samuel, but because of financial concerns, this was later abandoned. The hole has since been filled, but you can still find the rock that marks where the site was. Honestly, this entire town gave me some seriously spooky vibes. Now, the capital and largest city of Bulgaria, Sofia, is one of the most interesting ones, and I spent a lot of time there, so we're gonna spend a decent chunk of time on that. So let's talk about the Sofia Central Mineral Bath. So mineral bathhouses were actually a common feature in many European countries, as in the early 20th century, a lot of people didn't have private bathrooms in their homes, or private showers at least. So what did people do? Well, they got together and socialized in a public shower literally. They were actually seen as a social event, people would gossip, bathe for a couple hours, and that would probably be your only shower for the week. This one specifically was built in 1913 and was used publicly until 1986 when people determined that it really didn't serve much of a purpose. However, you can still see the building with a museum inside and the mineral water is still hot. The Roman Empire and Ottoman Empire remnants can be found all throughout Bulgaria, but especially in Sofia. Operation Complex Serdica are city remains from the Roman period that you can see today mixed with the Serdica II subway station. Near the end of it, you'll find the early Christian Basilica, built sometime in the 4th century. On the topic of churches, let's talk about the Triangle of Tolerance. In what seems to be a stone's throw away from each other, you can find the Church of St. Pecta of the Saddlers from the 14th century, the Mosque Banya Bashi from the 16th century, and the Sophia Synagogue, the largest one in the Balkans from 1909. The Roman remains can be found between all of them, and the name comes from the fact that the three biggest religions all have a building within eyesight from each other. Remember the Greece video when I said almost every country has its own tomb of the unknown soldier? Well, guess what? Bulgaria has one too, and it was built in 1981. The Ivan Yazhev National Theater was built in 1906 and seats around a thousand people. Its facade faces the city garden and has gone through several restorations through the last century. On to my favorite structure in the entire country, you will find the St. Alexander Nevsky Cathedral. It's one of the largest Eastern Orthodox cathedrals in the entire world, completed in 1912 to honor the Russian soldiers who fought the Ottomans in 1877. Many of the light fixtures and elements were produced in Germany or Italy. 
The dome is 150 feet high, with the bell reaching up to 175. Not enough, let's look at a very old building in Sofia. St. George's Rotunda Church is a red brick antique building erected in the 4th century. It's the oldest building in the entire nation, and originally it was a bathhouse from the Roman era. Man, we love our bathhouses today. I should note, all of these religious buildings are still active to this day. This one's also surrounded by the remains of the old Sardica walls, and is currently surrounded by the former Communist Party headquarters buildings. Speaking of those, these absolute behemoths of buildings were constructed after World War II in 1953. Considering that the nation had been ravished by Allied bombings, the huge open grounds made for the perfect spot. The three buildings housed the party headquarters itself, the Department of Heavy Industry, and the Agricultural Unions. You can walk around these buildings to this day, and some ground levels have businesses, however, much of it is modern governmental spots that are closed off to the public. Fun fact, the St. Sophia statue, not where the capital got its name from, actually used to be a statue of Lenin that faced the building. There also used to be a red star over the top that now resides in the Museum of Socialist Art. Alright, before we move on from the capital, let's just take a look at Vitosha Street. This is basically your nightlife haven that is full of pubs, restaurants, tattoo parlors, and other businesses that close off the streets entirely from cars. Once again, the United States take notes. All right, I think we've spent enough time in Sofia, so let's move on. This is what you call the Balkan bike. This was a very popular item to own during the Soviet era, and if you had one of these, you were probably considered popular. Modern day Bulgaria is actually the poorest nation in the EU, and a quarter of its population has left since 1991. When the USSR and the Eastern Bloc collapsed, massive corporations in the West invested in the East, privatizing all the public services, abandoning some of the maintenance, and overall just dominating the markets. This corroded society has left more than 25 towns completely abandoned. Okay, I'm gonna try and pronounce this right. Sturzeit translates to the crickets, and that was a popular Bulgarian rock and roll band from the 70s and 80s. Being a bit of a play on the Beatles, groups like this were pretty common in the era, where they would take Western-influenced music and kind of make their own version of it. Western music and artists weren't imported into the Eastern Bloc countries, but people still got their hands on it. A lot of the bootlegs are still passed around there today from that era, and I actually obtained one. If you're wondering, it's King Diamond's Fatal Portrait. Now these days, even modern Bulgarian pop music kind of reflects the Western styles, which isn't really much of a surprise. That doesn't mean it doesn't have its own twists, however. Saz is an instrument still sometimes used, which can date back to the Ottoman times, being common in their folk and classical music. Bulgarian folk bands are known as Bitovi. In terms of food, Tara Tara is a very popular dish, which I got to try. Essentially, it's a cold soup that comes from yogurt and water, utilizing crushed up cucumbers, walnuts, and sometimes garlic, giving it this taste that's slightly sweet, but also kind of bitter. Some Bulgarians will actually drink this as a beverage. Greece and Turkey like to fight over who had yogurt first, but many Bulgarians will tell you that it originated there. Another food from the region is banitsa, a far more neutral, albeit tasty food. It's essentially a flaky and buttery pastry, often made with feta cheese. Paristo Botev is hailed as a national hero, a famous poet from the 19th century known most for his book simply titled Songs and Poems. He was also a bit of a revolutionary icon, holding some anarchist and socialist views. This would convey conveniently help with a lot of propaganda in the 20th century. In fact, I'm pretty sure the Communist Party would paint him as one of the founders of Bulgarian socialism. Speaking of which, we should probably talk about that a little bit. This was the flag during the socialist days of Bulgaria. The nation's official name was the People's Republic of Bulgaria, now just being the Republic of Bulgaria. I actually still saw this flag being flown in certain rural towns that we drove through. From what I gathered, this seems to be a bit of a difficult topic for the locals. A lot of people aren't really sure how to analyze this era, whether it was better, whether it was worse, and of course the younger population weren't there, so they really don't care. Older generations might be found to be nostalgic for this time period. Needs were obviously more met before all the mass privatization. Some people are able to overlook the harsh economy of today, others are able to overlook how authoritarian the older days were. This is just what I was presented with, not my thoughts. The ruler of much of this time period was Todor Zhivkov. He was the party's ruler for almost the entire regime's time. He ruled longer than any Eastern Bloc ruler, and he's considered one of the longest non-royalty rulers ever. On the subject of long rulers, let's return to Tsar Samuel. He was one of Bulgaria's most prominent leaders of the first Bulgarian Empire from 997 to 1014 AD. His rule saw constant warfare as it was a struggle to remain independent from the Byzantine Empire. They would also fall into conflict with the Serbs, Croats, Hungarians, and, well, I guess basically everybody around them. Honestly, I'm going to stop there because this dude kind of could probably just have his own video. Now, the first Bulgarian state as we know it formed in 681 AD. The Bulgars that were led by Aspura moved to the modern day region in the southwest Balkans. Don't get me wrong though, Bulgarian history can be traced back many thousands of years all the way back to the Thracians. Other pre-Slavic Indo-European people groups existed there as well, but it would give way to the Thrace name and the earliest people were likely farmers that migrated from Anatolia during the Neolithic Revolution around 9,000 years ago. Modern Bulgarian 
Bulgaria is a member of NATO and the EU, which, as you can imagine, sparks all sorts of controversy within the country. Not gonna get into it. All right. Let's look at some more cities. Burgas is a Black Sea coastal city that was a popular vacation spot during the socialist terms and still is today. It's somewhat of a beach town with an East Europe twist, but does behold sites such as the Gramophone Sculpture, Outdoor Thracian Tomb, and the Pantheon of the Fallen Anti-Fascist, which was erected in 1981. As a more popular beach town, if you go up the coast of the Black Sea a little, you will reach Varna. Its thermal springs and beaches make it another popular vacation destination and is this country's third largest city. And considering it was a Thracian settlement and part of the Roman Empire, you are gonna find a lot of ruins here. The Varna Sea Garden spans 90,000 kilometers and also has an aquarium and a ship collection that you can see. Now, there are all sorts of churches and cathedrals in Varna, but the most notable one is probably the Dormition of the Theotokos Cathedral, built in the 1880s when Eastern Orthodox residents needed a place to worship. Gilded domes and stained glass windows allow it to stand out nicely. I guess we should also talk about the country's second largest city, Plavdiv. Considered a cultural hub, it sits along the Maritza River near the center of the country. It has been ravaged by continuous capture throughout old historical wars, and in 1878, it was taken from the Ottomans by the Russian army. It would then join Bulgaria in 1885. Largest landmark in the city is definitely the ancient theater, which is a large Roman amphitheater built on a hill just outside of it. Its ancient marble seats offer a great view of the city center, as well as the Rhodope Mountains. Operas are still performed here to this day. Kapana is the creative heart of the city, full of all sorts of galleries and shops. It's also a good city to see some of the Ottoman era houses. One example would be the Hindalayan house, and this era is said to be the best spot to try Thracian wine. Okay, I'm sorry to see why this city is called the cultural hub. The biggest river in Bulgaria is the Danube River, flowing all the way to the Black Sea, and this is also the case for a handful of other European nations. The Danube River actually makes up 80% of the border with Romania. Because of that, many bridges actually connect Romania and Bulgaria. The very first one was the Danube Bridge, also known as the Friendship Bridge, opening in 1954. It was designed by Soviet engineers with decorative looks given by the Bulgarian architects. Interestingly, the entire Balkan Peninsula actually gets its name from the Balkan Mountain Range, the biggest in the entire country. They start right at the border with Serbia and run across the nation to form a split between the north and the south. Botev Peak is the highest peak, being nearly 7,800 feet. Now, I mentioned how there's a lot of caves at the top of the video found in these mountain ranges, so you won't be surprised to hear that there is a diverse population of bats in Bulgaria. 33 of the 35 European species exist within the country, and all are protected under national and international legislation. I guess while we're talking about animals, I'll mention that the lion is the national animal of Bulgaria, found in the coat of arms, and no, there are not actually lions in this country. It's more to be representative of power and courage, not an uncommon feat. However, you can find other big cats, such as the Eurasian lynx and the European wildcat. Oh, and there were all sorts of, like, house cats all over the city running wild, and it was so cute. A very rare animal found in Bulgaria is actually the Egyptian vulture, with only a few hundred of them left in existence. Bulgaria was part of the Axis powers in both world wars. Off the coast of the Black Sea, there are five islands owned by Bulgaria. These are St. Thomas, St. Ivan, St. Anastasia, St. Peter, and St. Siresis. Guess they were going for a theme here. One that we're going to look at in particular is St. Anastasia. It's the only inhabited of the five islands, and it has an old island prison on it. Being built on volcanic rock, it was transformed to a prison in 1923, and in 1945, a group of 43 political prisoners escaped it and fled to the Soviet Union. Along with this, in the modern day, there is also a lighthouse, a monastery, and a few other things that tourists like to visit. The Perperikon can be found in the southern region of Bulgaria. These are ruins of a Thracian city. Human activity in this spot can date back to 5000 BC. Archaeologists have also recently discovered a multi-layered palace that was built during the Roman Empire times. Now, besides caves, other natural rock formations do exist in Bulgaria. One of them is the stone mushrooms of Belly Plast. They formed over hundreds of years of erosion in a lake bed that is now dry, and they're unique in how similar they all look. We looked at God's Eyes Cave, but there also exists the Devil's Throat Cave. This one contains the world's largest underground waterfall, falling 137 feet into the earth from the Trigrad River. You can take a tour of this cave too, but that one has to be accompanied by a guide. Because of Bulgaria's location and border with Turkey, it is seen as the bridge to Asia. In a very small select amount of countries, you nod your head to say no and shake your head to say yes. Bulgaria is one of them. And with that, we conclude this one. If you stuck around for this whole thing, thank you very much. For the next video, we'll go back to focusing on a specific topic. I hope you enjoyed this one. It was all sorts of fun to make, just like the Columbia one, having been there helps. As always, hit that like, subscribe, give me some feedback. Till next time.